Privet Rudia. So I wanted to make a short video on some of the stuff that I've been seeing online, especially with regards to uh, Russian language teachers. Uh, I am actively still trying to acquire and learn Russian. I'm on my third month and it has been super fun and it has opened I have opened myself up to a lot of different ideas and different views and I guess I wanted to start out with my background where um, my ideas are coming from or at least the place where I grew up um, my country was an ex-colony of the West so there are a lot of um, leftovers from that um, period and at the same time since we are in Asia um, and my family's roots are from China we also have a lot of um, I, I also grew up with um, some of the ideas of my ancestors so what I can say is that my worldview is not specifically only Western media but it's also not specifically only, um, let's say, Chinese media. Um, and I also, which is why I find it interesting to, lear to learn Russian, is because I also want to understand uh, the culture and the people. Because if you grew up watching Western media, all you would, and I know that, I know that because I've seen a lot of Western movies um, from Hollywood and they would always have what um, Russians or Chinese or Middle Eastern as people as the main antagonists and their of course their protagonists would always be white Americans and most of the time male I think so I mean that's just it and if you grew up with that kind of media and that kind of exposure, of course you would think just one way. So uh, I'm actually surprised that um, these Russian teachers are getting backlash and people saying that they want, they're not going to learn the language, um, boycotting the language, whatever, because of the war. If that was the case, Remember World War II? If that was the case, people would not be speaking German at all anymore. If they wanted to boycott the the evil person that did all the uh, allow the war crimes um, to happen during that time, the country is still going to be there. The culture is going to be there. Um, slightly changed, probably after. I mean, after we're all gone, but. You can't just cancel a culture. It's just, and with um, the sanctions that um, imposed on Russia right now, people are people in Russia are suffering, and Russia is such a big country. I recently found out that, I mean, recently, like in the last year, when I started diving into Russian, uh, Russia, Russia itself is such a huge country. Um, some of the people actually look East Asian. Um, uh, they do share a border with, I think, Korea, North Korea, and China. Uh, I know China has a board, uh, like share, because the north, one of the northern parts of China, Harbin, I think they're like sharing a border with um, Russia. And you can't just say that one like whatever the position of the government there's always an opposition so to cancel the entirety of russia uh, of russia and the russian people and the culture is just dumb and ignorant and um well people who think that way are ignorant so let's just educate ourselves and know that there are a lot of nuances to everything that's happening like I actually I was born after um, the USSR is no longer the USSR so that's how young I am and I don't know a world where there was a USSR 
and I don't know the the details of the Cold War. I don't know the details of a lot of things. So, but what is certain is that people generally do not want war. Um, but war happen. War happens, like in Syria or in Afghanistan or in Iraq. The most the most like the oldest war I guess that I can remember in my lifetime and the big one was the US invasion of Iraq um, in I think 2000 like after 9-11 and I guess 2001 20 years later what did that bring us nothing uh, I'm still looking for the weapons of mass destruction that the, the then President Bush said that Iraq had. So um, no one wins in war. People die in war. That's just it. But we don't, I don't know. Um, like there is an entire history behind um, the actions of um Vladimir Putin and um, NATO so it's just ignorant to try to cancel a culture and a language just because of that um, one other thing that I um, that that I also realized is the immigration situation with um, Ukrainians trying to flee Ukraine as compared to the Syrians um, who tried to um, seek asylum and be a refugee in Europe or other countries um, when they had their war. The reception of the people are different. Um, but we have to remember that war is war. Um, and the line between war and peace is just a th stone's throw away. Um, my generation is just lucky that there's no like we were born in the time where there isn't like we're not just after World War Two or where there's no like huge world war going on. And f being from a place that like. What I'm saying is, it's the people nowadays, compared to the the generation of my grandparents, <clears throat> have been lucky enough not to firsthand see how disruptive war is. So that's the blessing that. But um, it would be. But you should also. We should also talk to the older generation because they would have more insights as to um, the possible motivation behind um, what is happening today. From what I understand is NATO was formed to combat the Soviet Union at the time where it was still the USSR, but after the fall of the USSR, everyone, the Russia, Belarus, um, Poland, I think Ukraine, a lot of the p countries who who were part of the Soviet Union after they disbanded the NATO did not and um, I think one of the agreements was that NATO would not um, expand too far near Russia and what is what was happening since 1990 I think uh, was the fall of the USSR I mean the dis I mean, disbanding um, NATO has exp expanded closer and closer to Russia. So, that is the claim that um, the government of Russia is trying to stop like the West from actually reaching, reaching their country for safety and um, for the safety of their country, of keeping their country um, 
safe from in the the possible invasion of the other side. So how I see it is that one way or another, someone was going to start invading. <laughs> so it's just that Russia decided to, I mean, the government of Russia decided to go in first. Um, we will, it's like, if you've seen a lot of um, documentaries or um, retellings of um, events that happened in World War One, World War II, uh, the things that we consciously know right now that is in the media is probably 20% of what is really happening. All the meetings happen behind closed doors. Um, the big people pulling the strings on this war, unfortunately, um, are not the same people that are, are on the streets, just like you and me. Um, that would feel the effects of these decisions and these policies and these sanctions and um, on the ground. It is unfortunate, but it is a reality of life and it is the reality of progress and change. And um, basically the only thing that is certain in the world is actually change. And I think that's where um, the resilience and the optimism of the older generation like I've seen videos um, where people in Russia are actually asking the locals how what they think about the future, what they think about the war. Um, the older people, the older generation are generally more optimistic than the younger ones. The younger ones are saying that, oh, it's going to be the end of the world, it's going to be an apocalypse, blah, blah, blah. And the older generation is like, the future is going to be good. Um, they're optimistic because they have gone through probably World War One and Two, and they came out of it alive. So we don't know what's happening, going to happen in the future, but being ignorant and being stuck in one way of thinking and not being open to what are the possible um, realities and nuances in each situation is just, um, it's harmful because it could breed hate, just knowing one side, which is why after Roshan, I would, I'm cons I, I want to learn probably um, learn Arabic because they have been vilified in Western media so much. And I've been to um, Dubai, uh, the UAE, the people there are nice. So, you know, not, every Muslim person is part of ISIS and at the same time not every Catholic or not every Christian is not an extremist so you can't make generalizations like that which is why I kind of am off with some people who think that they have to be you have to be part of their group or their um, beliefs so that you could be civil the world is so big there's so many different ideas and opposing ideas. There are ideas that are similar. There are ideas that deviate at this point. It's just, you just can't cover everything. And the only remedy, I guess, for ignorance and hate would be understanding, love, empathy, and willing to see the, uh, the other sides of things. So I guess that's enough for my rant and I will be continuing to learn Russian and no matter how long that war is going to go, I believe that it would, um, like there would be um, a resolution soon, hopefully. It wouldn't drag out for years, just hopefully. I don't know, nobody knows. But what I'm sure of is I would be able to understand more and more of the language and culture and um, basically I'm giving um, positive vibes, prayers and um, optimism for the people both in Russia and in Ukraine and all the other places where war is happening. So thanks for watching this video if um, you are. Пока-пока.